Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinkerer Studio and welcome to the first Blender 2.8 tutorial. In this tutorial we will be exploring the Blender 2.8 beta interface. In order to download Blender 2.8 beta, go to blender.org and click on the download the daily build and share your feedback button. On the next page, click Download Blender 2.8 Beta, and then pick your operating system, and if you're 64-bit or 32-bit. This will download a zip file. Once you have the zip file downloaded, go ahead and extract your files. Once you have them extracted, you need to look for the executable file, which is the .exe file. Double click on that and you'll be able to get into Blender 2.8. Because it's still in beta testing, you're not going to get the typical desktop icon. So you'll have to go in here every time and look for the executable file. When you first open up Blender, you will see the typical splash screen. As of the time of this recording, the splash screen offers a quick setup. For the shortcuts, you can use the 2.8 shortcuts or the 2.7 shortcuts. You can choose also to select with either your left or right mouse button. You can choose what you want to use the space bar for, either play, tools, or search. You are also able to choose your theme. You can still choose to load the 2.79 settings as well. If you make any changes to the settings, you can save these settings from the splash screen. Once you have these settings applied, you're presented with a new splash screen with various links and the ability to choose your working space. Now if you start up a new project by clicking on General, you will open up in object mode and user perspective view. Numpad 5 will still be able to change between orthographic and perspective views. And the tab key will allow you to go from object mode to edit mode back to object mode. In the drop down menu, you still have your sculpt mode vertex paint, weight paint, and texture paint as well. Now there are a few important changes that have been made between Blender 2.7 and Blender 2.8. Control tab now brings up pie menus. Your A key still selects everything and if you click off the mesh that will deselect everything. The manipulator from 2.7 you will see is not shown but it can be accessed by choosing the move tool. At the top of the interface we still have the file, render, window, and help menus. In addition Blender 2.8 now has an edit menu. Under this menu you have the options for undo, redo, undo history, repeat last, repeat history, adjust last operation, operator search, lock objects modes, and your preferences. Next to these menus are tabs that are called workspaces, similar to the tabs along the side of the tool shelf in 2.7 and the menu at the bottom of the 3D viewport in 2.7. The layout workspace is the default workspace and here you'll see your 3D viewport in object mode and user perspective mode just like you see in the default screen for 2.7 and you also have the timeline. The modeling workspace is the default workspace for modeling. Here you have your 3D viewport in edit mode and user perspective. The sculpting workspace is a default workspace for sculpting. 
Here you have your sculpting viewport in sculpt mode with a matte cap already applied to the model. UV editing workspace is the default workspace for UV editing. Here you'll see a split viewport with the UV image editor on the left and the model on the right. Notice that if you have a simple geometric mesh, Blender 2.8 will automatically unwrap the UV. The texture paint workspace is the default workspace for texture painting. Here again you'll see a split viewport with the UV image editor on the left and the model on the right. Notice that if you have a simple geometric mesh, Blender 2.8 will automatically unwrap the UV. The shading workspace is the default workspace for texturing. Here you'll see a split viewport with a file browser, the viewport, UV image editor, and the node editor. Notice that you now have an automatic HDRI to show how light will affect your model. The animation workspace is the default workspace for animation. Here you see a split viewport with a rendered view, the viewport, and the dope sheet. The rendering workspace is the default workspace for rendering. Here you see a split viewport with a camera view and a timeline. The compositing workspace is the default workspace for compositing. Here you see a split viewport with a node editor and a dope sheet. The scripting workspace is the default workspace for scripting in Python. Here you see a split viewport with a 3D viewport, history, and scripting area. You can also set up and save your own workspaces by clicking on the plus sign. The 3D viewport has a new toolbar on the left. The new tools in the toolbar, once activated, stay activated until you change to another tool. Their settings are displayed in a bar at the top of the window. The status bar is displayed along the bottom of each workspace. The status bar shows information about what different mouse buttons and keys will do in each workspace, mode, and tool. It also provides scene statistics and messages and progress indicators for tools and jobs. The Outliner is still present in 2.8, but it now contains not only scenes, but collections. These collections replace the layers in Blender 2.7. In order to add an object to a collection or to add a new collection, you use your M key to bring up the Move to Collection menu. The Properties Editor was reorganized to have buttons mainly in a single column layout. Panels can also have sub-panels now, which are more advanced and less commonly used settings collapse by default. The Properties region can still be accessed by using the N key, just like in Blender 2.7. In the Properties Region panel, the panels directly related to mesh editing is the Transform panel, where numeric values can be entered for location, rotation, scale, and dimensions. We also have access to the properties for the view, such as the focal length, the camera lock, the 3D cursor, and annotations. Areas can still be split and joined just like in Blender 2.7. You no longer see the hash marks in the corners of the areas. Instead, when you're on a corner and you see a crosshair, this indicates that you can hold down your left mouse button and split the area. To join the area, simply go to a corner, 
and when you see the crosshair, hold down the left mouse button and drag onto another window. This was just a quick introduction to the Blender 2.8 interface. I'll be offering more 2.8 tutorials in the near future. If you follow along with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please tweet me your creations. The link is in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good day.